So I'm going to read a, a couple poems from my first book, Skin Shift. Just because I never got to read from it on the West Coast, so, you know, it needs some love out here. You think you know where your poems are in the book? <laughs> Samson in reverse. Age 15 or so, I rode Metro Bus G home from school. Silver poles, blue plastic seats filled with teens, book bags. Stop over downtown, and we made room up front for headscarves, black and Hispanic women, children. One day, a woman with no nose rode. Sunlight stuck on the flat bandage tape. Gold G headed for Allentown, cleared quickly as middle-class Caucasian kids competed to jerk the cord first. A teenager's power flows from cars, clothes, hair. If too young to drive, the latter loom, and so the day I was mistaken for a girl, worse, called hermaphrodite, I got off on 8th Avenue. It was the early 90s. Three years prior, Madonna dressed as a man, danced atop precipitous stairs in a metropolis-inspired set. She grabbed her crotch as steam spewed, as muscle boys worked, fought, sweat. One found her. His grimy hand left a smudge on the sheet in which she wrapped her naked body. Then the girly show toured, and Madge, in tribute to Dietrich's recent death, dragged in full tuxedo, platinum pixie dew hidden beneath a top hat, like a virgin sung in deep German accent, bookended with falling in love again, never wanted to. A haircut then must matter a do as boy as boy could be. I headed up 8th Avenue to Broad Street, where narrow porch roofs linked row homes. A tiny cylinder stood out on one post, candy cane in flux, white, blue, red, white, blue, spiraling up, Rachiel's barbershop. My mother had cut my hair one too many times since I last came here, and Rachiel stopped mid-snip when I entered to say hello, like he always did. His voice deep and soft beneath a thick mustache. He wore pleated pants, tasseled loafers, and tufts of chest hair peaked from his button-downs open collar. I took a seat against the wall, perused the magazine-laden table. I liked space images, suns and moons and black holes, or sketches and maps of ancient cities. I did not find the African women's breasts awful, but grew frustrated at camera angles how men covered their inch or two. When finished, Rachiel called next and asked, how do you want it? As he tucked a white cloth in my collar and tied a long body bib around my thin neck. I wanted it shorter, wanted the shape of my head to show, wanted no one to doubt I was all boy, as butch, as Madonna, as Dietrich. <laughs> Silver-eyed scissors peered from his pocket, leapt at my head, spoke in accents, Snip squeak, squeak snip, snip squeak, and snippets fell, slid down bib. Gold joined gray from the last customer, red of the man before. My head light at the sight of the hairy rainbow. Clippers hummed. Look down, he instructed. His hand guided my head down, away from the mirrors. Shaved tufts tumbled as he sheared sides back, and then I flinched as the metal bit. He wiped off the blood drop, Hooked out a brush to dust nose and neck. He unwrapped me, conjured a hand mirror so I could see how the white scalp shone out above the red lines, crusty bead, platelets piling up. Was it my grin, the satisfied air, an apology? Did he see the features of my father and brother emerge? Remember my first time? I pronounced Barber Barbara and delighted in a piece of bazooka bubblegum given for silence for sitting still. Years since he offered that red and blue wrapper, he offered that day when I paid. I walked home, chewing pink gum, newly exposed scalp cold, the nick, brief, small, on fire. My new book, The Erotic Postulate, it's funny, this is actually my first book, but it came out second, so it's like, <laughs> weird when I talk about it as the new book, because in my head it's older than this one. But. 
Um, what do I say about it? It's, it deals with, I'm, I'm a rather cerebral poet, so you can see my little like blue and red markers to mark like the cooler poems, which are more abstract and cerebral, and then like the hotter poems, which are more like steamy and you know, man on man. So, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to do too many of the cerebral poems, but we'll see. Um, in grad school, I uh, had an advisor who thought my entry into politics and my poetry was preaching to the choir and that, you know, I just shouldn't be doing this stuff because the only people who are going to read my poetry already agree with me on these things. And then my other advisor said, oh, as, this, as if that person has never written a preaching poem. So she said, embrace the preachiness. So I put it right in the title. What I preach, I preach for the sake of what we excavate. Do not assume two skeletons intertwined on a bed, bold face love. Yes, pelvis echoes pelvis. Femur locks to femur. Humerus hugs rib cage. Carpels rest on collarbone. Dub us the lovers if you must, and pry his grafted death grip from my bones. Carbon date us. DNA test us. Measure, drill, and comb. The results do not change, do they? Sex is sex. Reconstruct our faces, our bodies. Gauge beauty. Will you recognize us, see our bond? Two lives come down across eons. Two lives that, yes, did exist, married at the millennium's dawn. Cut this discourse. No reliquary will hold our bones. No bracelet of bright hair will you find wrapped about his wrist unless his dark hair wraps around mine. Let us sleep. Let the spaces of our skeletons speak, the space between rib, placard, and word. Grind marrow, place our splinters in an urn, simple, unadorned, the way our bodies formed. No jewels, no rings, no amulet or ankh, no yellowed wraps to burn, just bone and bone, the word transmogrified from bone. <coughs> In Southern California, I have to read my David Hockney poem. It's one of my favorites. Two Men in a Shower. Flipping through reruns, infomercials, I stalled on palm tree silhouettes, an orange sky. David Hockney's name faded in, solidified, faded out. Just days ago, snowed in, I consumed an entire volume of his work. The play of light on water in its paper pools, photo collages and reversed perspectives, vanishing point, now the starting point for a canvas that opens out, viewer lodged. When I sat then and wrote the words, two men in a shower, wet plastic stirred, its translucent surface beaded, droplets heaving into streaks as shadowy flesh touched, bent, and broke up the shower stream's thin spray, I thought, could a digital snapshot recreate this? It could alter, but then, viewer, would it still hold true? Only many photos co-joined, not in the sense of mosaic or of animation flip book, but whole corners overlapped like two pod bodies that bend, straighten, bend again. True, I washed him and then he, me. One arm lifted, then a leg, muscle sliding against muscle. And when I drew the curtain back, when my hand reached out to grab a towel, did the account equal truth or something new? My foot crossed the tiled lip as he cast the towel, rubbed my back down, droplets and streaks erased, linked, then released. Did the scene stall here, removed from time, or did you complete it, viewer? Focus on the hand held against my abdomen, the hand on the frame, what extends beyond the frame. A scene reflected before the shower, into the shower, the extended after. My buddy Charlie is here tonight. Hi. And we have a love of a modernist poet, Hilda Doolittle, HD. I'm from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where HD was born and where she rests peacefully. If I'm ever there and you're there, I will take you to her grave. And so I have to read this because Charlie's in the audience. 
more people need to love HD and discover her brilliance. Read Trilogy. Start there. This is a dramatic monologue in HD's voice. Um, Briar was her longtime companion throughout her life, and Perdita is her daughter. I think that's all you need to know. HD and prismatic ecstasy. Only a year, dear Briar. One year since you appeared like Nike, Swift. One wing for me, one wing for my child. Your child, our child. This daughter, this flesh between us, spirit of us. You lifted us across the distance, took us to the aisles where you take your namesake, Briar, Briar and Skilly, I and Skilly, the child. Was it coincidence there off the coast of Cornwall? I wrote my notes on thought and vision, but July, one year after our first encounter, tea in a summer cottage. You, aspiring you, your letter of solidarity to HD and GST. There were twos and twos and twos in my life. There were two of everybody, except myself. Sure, there was Ezra, Richard, my brothers, D.H. and Cecil, but no two like us, two women alone. No two like me and Perdita, mother and child, daughter. Not like that first child, a boy child taken from me. So many men taken from me, or did I will them away? My father dead of shock or heartbreak at my brother's death in France. My husband after the discovery that the child was not his, as if it was his right alone to twist the wrists of this or that mistress. And lovers, two men split. One whose body produced this child. One whose mind and spirit produced this slip. Slippage into one who threw herself from a cliff to rid the heart of a passion grown a crid, sick, not unlike the sickness I suffered last spring, body listless, doctors predicting death of mother and daughter. Until you came, you, Briar, with your promise and pledge, your lips mint of my breath, anti-strophe to my strophe, chin fixed on the ridge of my hip, the way this ship sits within the wave, above and below, mist spritzed up as we split from the continent, headed for Corfu. And though we travel, and though this island rises to greet us unscathed, and though one child survives while the other dies, and though uniforms still drift down streets in furrowed fields, the way flags rift the sky, wind indifferent, one day all hiss as it rips through cloth and rope, rips rope from pole, the next day silent beyond a whisper, stripes, stars, sickles, listless. And though all this, and through all this, I find a thought projected on the swish of air and salt, as if on a wall, outlined in light, print scripted in a foreign hand, the way fishermen clean fish, gutted, nipped, an oily pink strip, flint riddling a language of seven. What did I see? A ladder, a tripod, a goblet, a soldier. Through the veil of the jellyfish upon my head, I saw crisp irises glitter as if Isis snaked through the mist, the S-curve, a lintel of sorts. Go on, you say. I go through. I cross the bitter, bitter threshold, enter the S, and there you are. You, but not you, in a nimbus of fire, a disc like a cistern's opening, the angle of incidence astringent to the angle of reflection, pitch tipped as if to drip, as if the waters beyond the disk mixed like vines and privets, a glow like the citron's little globes, my vision, my body adrift in this inviolate gold tint, as bit by bit I enter the pit, witness to this ritual. I am witness. I witness Perdita. I witness Briar. I go on. We need a wrestling poem, after all. <laughs> Who doesn't like wrestling? There's two wrestling poems. Wrestlers Unfinished and Wrestlers Finished. I'm going to do Unfinished. This is based off a Thomas Aiken study. There is actually a finished version of the painting, but I like there's something about the unfinished version. 
I like process, so seeing the process of it spoke, spoke a little bit more to me than the final veneer of the final image. Wrestlers unfinished. Take, take down. Wrestlers joined in fierce lines, force found in this intricate ritual at the point force fails. Delicate grapplers, the groin grounds for touch. Why stall? Loins forever hot in a halo of wash and stroke, one body set on tipping the other. No reversals here, no turning back. Though exposed, the back triangulates head, arm, and leg. Most stable of compositions, the echo and dip as tanned hands grip wrists, one face turned up, the other in to pin both shoulders and lay the back flat. After the body passes, the dimpled mustard mat rises into itself, that slow give of padded elasticity, first creased, then wrinkled, a custard body cradled, legs gathered up, two shaven heads obtusely bent, roped in, torso twisted, groin groped, slightly spread. Before I get to the last poem, Brent has been reading his lovely villanelles all through our fall tour and now through our winter tour. And he always references the fact that I also write villanelles, and I have yet to read one. So, The Astronomer on Misnomers. Was the silence perfect? Look up and see. What you see, I see. And yet not quite true. Sound and monstrous shape. Draw point A, B, C, D, E. Wonder Woman's crown. Old Cassie upside down. If we share this point of view, then there is nothing left to say or see. But say you saw from Alpha Centauri. Add point F for our sun, and the crown shoots left, a zig, a zag. <coughs> Shapes change. Start with C. How easily it becomes V or B-flat, 57 octaves below, the tune of a black hole. It's all parallax, see? Names we make to designate, so quaint. Freeze or bang, rip or crunch. They're all big, all blue shift or red shift, Doppler effect, and C is a doppelganger. The one verse breathes, expands, and contracts. A bounce, a blink. You see. I see, and what does what we look at see? A we. Come here, that constant middle C. And I will end on my little treatise of love. Two ones remain two ones. That is the problem, is it not? The problem with love. The fact that two ones remain two ones. Hedvig sings origin of love through my stereo. Of course, her story's complicated, that botched sex op for one. But she rehearses Aristophanes. His story, love's structure argued. Woman, 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 man, man, man. Are we all like pieces of the coins that children break into half for keepsakes? I know nothing of breaking or having. Flip the coin, make two spin out of one. Motion multiplies the eye. We are not like the flatfish. No, they want nothing more than to remain flat pleuronectiforms, blend into seafloor. In fact, they swim on their sides, eyes cast heaven wide. Does that mean lack, that they are but half? If each of us forever seeks the half that will tally with himself, should we not first tally with him and then self. Tally one plus one. A two comprised of two ones does not contain two ones. Onione does not mean two, nor ionion, nor inune. Scramble the letters. Ask what is new about love after eons. Slippery words stretched, forced to contain ones, twos, and more twos. Lufu, lupiati, roots that fill, fulfill two. If I am complete in myself, and you are complete in yours, why come together? It takes two to love, to know how to separate, how to come, 
the Rigorae rates back together. It takes ions, two stable, unstable ones, to reach union. But do two same-sex ones differ? Same a misnomer. There is no difference. Go towards that which enables becoming. I do not love you. I love to you. Toward you. The way one December morning thunder pressed my thoughts toward Philly's art museum. That painting where a bolt of light tore canvas. Toward you, the way back pressed against back. One creature slept beneath a blanket and cheat. The way you then stirred, spooned me, slid one arm under my shoulder, one leg between my thighs, as rain syncopated the roof's slate, a staccato hold and a legato undertow, the gutters running over. The way wind muttered in the shutters, the way a curious trimeter tinkling tore us from bed, wet ceiling seemed split as I groped the attic with a towel, bucket, and flashlight for wet spots. The way I paused, listened for your voice to yell, it stopped, come down. The way I crawled back under the covers, your body yours, my body mine. One next to one, as two. Thank you. <laughs>